I guess we all come to Jesus at different times and appreciate your testimony today. I uh, guess you had an alabaster box to pour out as well. And I think we all do. And we give God praise for that. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you are here in this place. And so, God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would move among us and touch our hearts. We pray, God, that today we would understand the power of your love and your grace and your mercy and how that sustains us in times of great difficulty. And so, Lord, I thank you today, and I ask, Lord, now that as I bring forth your message to your people that you would so fill me with your Holy Spirit that the words I speak, the meditation of my heart, would be acceptable to you, and God will give you the praise, the glory, the honor. For all these things we ask in the precious, beautiful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Well, I guess if uh, Job could have picked a Super Bowl team to bet on, he would have lost. Seemed like it was a downturn for him, and I'm sure he struggled with trying to understand how it all happened and what was going on in his life. I'm sure he was filled with questions about what was taking place and why, at this point in time, after he had been so blessed, that things just seemed to come off the hinge and the wheels began to run out of air, and he was stumbling through life. This was a time for Job to really reflect about who he was and who God was in his life. We always have heard it said that nobody could have it as bad as Job. I mean, he is always the name that we bring up when someone's going through difficult times. But, you know, it's all relevant, I think to who you are and what's taking place in your life because what's happening in your life is probably more significant and greater to you than what took place in Job's. When you're handling the difficulties and adversity and problems that come in life, you seem enormous, amen? They grow and they seem large before you and you try to understand as Job did, I'm sure, how this ever came to be. By the point in time that I was read of our scripture that I read this morning, Job had already lost all of his livestock, which was in his day and time, his status, his money, his security, it was all gone. Everything was either stolen or dead, and that included all his servants were taken from him as well. And not only that, but he had heard and news had gotten to him that all of his sons and daughters who had gathered in one place to eat dinner together and to celebrate that the place in which they had gathered had fallen in on them and all of his children, they were dead. Their lives had been taken. And now Job is sitting, certainly mourning, and we're told that at this point in time in his life, he was covered from the sole of his foot to the head, to the top of his head with boils. And he was having to scrape them off himself. I don't think he was having a very good day. In fact, his week had been pretty rough. And when he thought that nothing else could happen or go wrong, something did. And he was struggling to try to understand why all this was happening in his life. I think all of us would agree together today that we live in a world where adversity and trouble and problems are very prevalent. I think you would agree with me that it is virtually impossible to be born in this world 
and to live your life in this world and to never experience adversity or problems in your life. Because it is the nature of this world to have those things. And it's been that way since the beginning. Our world is always presented adversity and problems to all the people who live in it. What do you do when trouble happens? When trouble is looking you in the face? How do you, how do you engage it? How do you process it? How do you deal with it in your life? I think Job in our scripture gives us a few clues on how to do that. I think he helps us to realize at least some things that we can do that will help us when times of trouble come upon us. I think it's best handled, and what Job would tell you if he was here, it's best handled when we recognize the reality of the truth that it is going to be there. There is, as I said, no way to live life in this world and escape adversity or trouble. There is no way to do that. It is an inescapable part of life. And I'm looking at all your beautiful faces out there, and every one of you are just beautiful. But I would, has, I, I would guess, hazard to guess, that if I ask you to raise your hand, I'm not going to do that, of course, but if I were to ask you to raise your hand, anyone that is, has a difficulty or problem in their life today that they're dealing with, large or small, that most everyone would probably raise their hand. That's how prevalent adversity is in our world. Again, it's because of the nature of the world we live in. It's because it's been that way forever. Even Jesus encountered hardship and adversity when he was born into this world and when he lived among our world. Jesus suffered probably more than anyone else who has ever lived in this world. He was at least innocent and pure. But yet the world crucified him because of the sinfulness and the fallen nature of the world in which we live. Because Jesus came to solve the problems of the world, but the problems of the world fought back. Yet he was able to overcome them. And so it is the world in which we live in, it is the nature of the world that adversity exists. And it comes in the form of sickness, it comes in the form of illness, it comes in the form of death, it comes in the form of all kinds of things. But it's here in the world that we live because it is the nature of the world in which we exist that these things happen in our lives. John 16, Jesus speaking says this, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Now get that. In me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. He said that in me you may have peace. In the world you got problems. In, in Jesus you got what? Okay, peace. Problems, peace. He's saying that adversity when it comes into your life, come to me. Because I am the giver of peace. Give to me that which is confronting you and receive my peace in return for what you bring to me. Jesus said, in this world we will have tribulation. And the fact is, that's true. Any of his followers could tell you that. But... The world can tell you that. You don't have to go into our community very far to talk to people that are dealing with adversity in their life, whether they're Christians or not. No one is excluded. 
And neither was Job. He wasn't excluded either. So he is dealing with these issues in his life. But he's discovered something that I think we need to realize as well, and that the adversity that exists in this world and the problems that we face and the nature of this world is not of God's doing. It's not of God's doing. God's intention for our world was much greater than adversity. But the sinful nature of the world and the fall of the world and the things that we do in terms of choices and decisions has created an environment where adversity prospers and grows. It's fertile ground for adversity. We don't have to read the newspaper or even listen to the news at night to determine that. It's everywhere that we look in this world. But understand, it is not of God's making nor design. Verse 7 said in our scripture, Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. I always want to call him Job for some reason, but Job. With sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Trouble, despair, adversity. There's an adversary in the world who specializes in bringing that to you and giving it to you on a platter. That's the nature of the problems we face in this world because it is trouble seems to be everywhere. And it happens for the reasons that I've given you. And, and a lot of them are choices that we make. A wonderful example. Think of this now for just a moment. Sarah and Abraham were given a wonderful promise of a child to be born to them. And as Sarah was waiting and Abraham, Sarah was a little put out that it wasn't happening as quickly as she wanted so we have Hagar enter the situation and becomes pregnant with a son for Abraham, whose name is what? Ishmael, right? Now, God blessed when Sarah pushed out from the presence of Abraham, Hagar and Ishmael, God told her that he would bless them and that they would grow. And they did into a mighty people. But so did Abraham and Sarah. Abraham became the father of many nations as God had promised. And all we have to do to see the consequences of this is to look over in the Middle East today. And the very people who are pressing in on the nation of Israel and the very people that Israel are fighting against are what? The descendants. Adversity happens when we don't follow the rule of God or hear the voice of God and be obedient to that voice. And the consequences are horrific. And friends, we all suffer. Because no one who lives ever makes all the right choices. Nobody. We all are capable of choosing poorly or choosing correctly. But we never know. But I'm promising you that we are capable of both. Amen? So we have to be careful not to pick up rocks and throw them. Lest they come right back at us. 
So the issue is this. The making of adversity and hard times and difficulties is not of God. Now, God can use those to grow us into his image and to teach us of his righteousness and to help us to understand the better choice we can make of him than the things of the world. Because the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So even poor choices, if we look to God in the midst of adversity, because of choices, God can use those to build us spiritually into stronger people. So God takes it all and uses it for his glory. But he is not the creator, nor the designer, nor the maker of your problems or my problems. Listen, we are more than capable of making those for ourselves. Amen. God doesn't have to send them. All he has to do is just let us go on our own and we're fine to make our own problems. So it is not of God's desire that that happens to us. And Job realized this in uh, the first chapter of Job, the 20th verse, we read these words. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped. This is after hearing of the death of his children and the loss of all his possessions. What did he do? He tore and mourned and fell to the ground and worshiped God. He did not curse God. He did not blame God. He worshiped God at the worst moment of his life. Because he recognized that it was not God. So God is the answer to dealing with trouble and adversity. And again, Job realized this. Chapter 1, verse 22. Through all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God for what was taking place in his life. Any of us here ever blame God or get angry at God or mad at God? Because I want to tell you, you know, we do. And I want to tell you something else. It's okay to be angry. Take your anger to God. It's not like you're going to hurt his feelings. It's not like you're going to tell him something he's never heard before. But also worship God. Also worship God. He is the solution to all the difficulties we face in life. He is the answer. There are always other voices calling your name. For Job, it was his wife who said, curse God and die. And it was his three friends who made the journey to be with him. And what they brought were good intentions with poor results. Because if you read the rest of Job, you realize that their solution, their suggestions, their ideas on what he should do about his problem were not what God had intended. And God rebuked them in the end of the book of Job for what they brought to him. So there are always going to be verses, I mean, uh, voices calling. There is always going to be that. Everyone's got a solution to your problem. If you don't blame me, just ask the person next to you. And they'll come up with something. They will have an idea or suggestion as to what you should do to solve all the issues in your life. Isn't that nice? And it's with the best of intentions. But be careful. Because they don't have the answer you know who's got it? The Lord. He is the solution to life's adversities. I love what Job said in verse 10. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? And then in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. 
You see, the end of the story is a testimony to the power of God, isn't it? As you get to the end of the book of Job, you realize that God restored everything to Job. And it says in verse 42.10, And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. And then in verse 42, 12, it says, And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. More than his beginning. Why? Because Job would not turn loose of God as the solution to his problem. No matter how heartbreaking, no matter how misunderstood Job was about what was taking place, no matter how angry in his heart he was that all this was happening, and I think we would fool ourselves to say that he didn't get upset or mad about this. But in all of that, he never sinned against God with his mouth or his lips. And he worshiped. He worshiped God in the midst of an angry heart and in the midst of adversity like none of us, I hope and pray, will never experience for ourselves. It's easy to understand the moral of the story. It's a whole nother other thing to live that out. But if we leave today recognizing that God has the solution, then we are at least on the right track in life to be blessed and to put aside the adversity and the things and troubles and problems that this world holds for us that we may be experiencing today, but also that awaits us in the future. Focusing on the solution, the solution being Jesus. He's the answer to the things that confront us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for this time, and I pray, God, that you would bless us in this coming together, that as we do come together today, Lord, we do seeking you out. And Lord, help us to take away today the idea that you are the God of all possibility, the God of all things, the God of all solutions to life's problem, because you are the creator of life itself. And so, God, I pray today that we would turn to you in the midst of all adversity and in the midst of all that we experience in life, both good and bad, giving you the glory, the praise, and the honor simply because you deserve it. Thank you, God, for loving us as you do. Amen. Let's stand together.